All right, it is official. May 1st, I'm taking the SIE exam, FINRA's Security Industry Essentials. And I thought I'd make this quick video for those of you that follow me along my little journey here, wondering why am I taking this? What is covered in the exam? And for any of you that stumble upon this video in the future, if you're thinking about taking the SIE and you have questions, drop me a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you. The SIE exam is kind of like the foundation test, the entry level test for anyone who wants a career in the financial industry. And no, that is not why I'm taking it. I don't plan on getting my series six. You need to be employed by a FINRA regulated broker, you know, Wall Street broker or agency to go get your series six. And I don't want to go work for somebody. This is more like a warm up for me getting my CFA certification, the chartered financial analyst. And I will be talking about that on some follow-up videos here in the future. That is about a year and a half, two year long process, costing thousands and thousands of dollars to sit for those exams and to study for them. So this is a little warm up. Let's talk about what is on the FINRA SIE exam. The SIE exam covers four broad categories. It's 75 questions. The categories are knowledge of capital markets, understanding products and their risks, understanding trading customer accounts and prohibited activities and overview of the regulatory framework at a high level because we're going to keep this quick section one knowledge of capital markets covers all of the regulatory entities and agencies market structure how the economic factors impact capital markets and the different types of offerings that institutions can do. Also covers some of the rules related to capital markets. Section two covers different types of products and their risks. So what are the different types of securities? Common stock, preferred stocks, rights, warrants, ADRs, uh, bonds, how debt instruments work, corporate bonds, municipal securities, treasuries, maturities, coupon value, par value, yield. There are some other topics in section two though that a regular trader might not have intimate knowledge of. Packaged products, municipal fund securities, direct participation programs, REITs, and uh, of course there's a section on hedge funds. I bet we're all experts on that, huh? There's another great section in here that we talk about all the time on this channel, understanding the risk of your investments, capital risk, credit risk, currency risk, liquidity risk, market risk, political risk. I know I do like to say it a lot. There are more things to being a successful trader than just looking at a chart. Understand those damn risks to have long-term success in this market. And how do you mitigate that risk by balancing your portfolio, diversifying, and hedging, sometimes with options or other instruments. Section three goes over understanding trading customer accounts and prohibited activities, the different types of orders, market orders, stop limit, good till canceled, et cetera, and the strategies for them. Investment returns, how they're calculated, how trade settlement works, how different corporate actions work, splits, dividends, reverse splits, et cetera, proxy voting, the different type of customer accounts, cash margin, options accounts, et cetera, individual joint trust, custodial partnerships, anti-money laundering, books, records, and privacy requirements, prohibited activities, including market manipulation and insider trading. Some of this stuff was just too easy to learn, let me tell you. And all of the regulations and rules that you have to memorize that go along with everything in this section. Section four, the overview of the regulatory framework includes a section on SRO, self-regulatory organizations, employee conduct and reportable events, and then a bunch of different rules, including the FINRA bylaws, the FINRA rules, the CBOE rules, MSRB rules, and the SEC rules and regulations. That is where the bulk of my studying work went into memorizing all of these damn rules and regulations. So that is the recap. I'll let you know in about 10 days how I did. The pass rate on this test for first time test takers is about 73%. Contrast that to something like the CFA, which I'm going to take next, which costs thousands of dollars and has a first time pass rate of 25 to 30%. 
I'm not too worried about the SIE. I know most of this information already. Taking the SIE for me is more about validating what I already knew, refreshing myself on things that I had forgotten, and learning some of the rules and regulations that I didn't have committed to memory, and prepping myself for the CFA, which I'm going to be doing next. That is going to be the bear. Well, I hope you found this interesting. It's been fun studying for the SIE exam. And if you have any questions about it, feel free to drop me a comment down below. I am Tony DeNaro. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next video.